A few months ago, I had an overwhelming experience with this substance taken as generic Benadryl. I wrote this soon after it happened. It was a snowy, windy night. I went over to Jay's house to sleep over. We had planned on taking the drill, as we called it. We hadn't had much experience with it before this. Me twice, him once. It was mysterious to us. The time before we had taken it together, we took 15 pills. We had cloudy electric visuals form over everything and felt very stoned. Time passed so slow it was mind-blowing, but we didn't see anything other than the electric jelly. This time, we were ready for a full-blown visual fiesta. His parents were out for the night to return probably after the bars closed around 2. At 9, we swallowed 30 each. Only 15 minutes later, we were feeling the sleepy heaviness come on. We played some perfect dark N64 game and waited. Soon, things get a little blurry in the memory. All of a sudden, Jay is looking at me through the window outside. It is winter and I react feeling slightly concerned at first. Then he disappears. I run out the door to look for him and see all these people having a barbecue outside. There were about seven guys standing around a grill trying to keep warm. It was dark so I could only see their outlines, an eerie sight. I don't remember this scene appearing to me as very odd though, it just was. I walked over and asked a guy if he saw Jay, he shook his head. I turned around and walked to the back of the house, and there he was. I said, Jay, get back inside, it's pretty cold out. He looked at me and said, cold as ice, and kept saying that over and over. Then he disappeared into thin air. That did seem weird to me and I became scared. I ran back into the house, tracking slushy snow and mud in with my socks, and see the real Jay smoking a joint on the couch. I said, cool, your parents let you smoke that? Maybe I was thinking they were home. He said nothing and passed it. The joint went through my fingers and landed somewhere on the couch. Shit, we might have a fire if we don't find that, I say. Jay gets up and leaves as I keep searching the couch, under it, through the cushions. Then, an image I will never forget. I see a shadow form on me, so I turn around. It's Jay, standing there with a fire extinguisher pointing at me and the couch. I don't have a chance to move. He blasts the couch and the white freezing cold cloud and slush gets me too. He doesn't stop spraying until the whole couch is covered in a white foamy frost and the fire extinguisher only had tiny chunks left to sputter out. A few globs stuck to my arm and it felt very numbing. I am confused and have bad vibes at this point. I also can't seem to stop coughing. I look up and Jay is gone. There is a jelly substance that glows with many different images on the floor as I crawl towards the bathroom. I see pictures of the end of the world which is a huge war, images of flowers and brightly colored random objects. I get to the bathroom and sit on the toilet trying to piss. I feel waves of intense oblivious confusion. Things don't seem right. I start to piss and it feels very warm, then realize I hadn't taken my pants off. I keep going anyways, and wow, I sure did have to piss a lot. It even got to my socks which were already muddy and wet. I crawl to Jay's room up the stairs. I'm pretty sure I was crawling everywhere because I didn't have coordination to stand. I lay on his bed and ask the darkness what is going on, what is my purpose. Jay opens the closet door, startling me. You are here, so am I, let us travel, he said. Jay had been hiding in his dark closet. In here, I can see the glowing red if I drop a joint, then blankness as far as memory goes. Next, we are woken up to yells and screams. His parents had come home, so this was probably around 2 a.m. I was laying in the hallway right outside of Jay's room. Jay is on his floor. I feel very dizzy, but seem to be more sober mentally. Jay yells, I'm okay, it's okay. Well, it wasn't. There was mud everywhere from our socks. The house was cold because of a door left open. The couch was all messed up from the fire extinguisher, and the fire extinguisher itself was thrown through the glass end table, shattering it all over the floor. In Jay's room, there was some strange rearranging of objects, such as his lamp and clock in his closet and the blinds torn off the window, all bent up. Lots of damage. His parents bought our story that we took lots of Benadryl after reading on the internet it could make us see things, but this didn't make them less mad. Jay had to get a second job to pay for the $200 table and the $100 in cleaning money for his mom. 
we no longer had to worry about the missing joint since we realized there was none. It was a confusing but fascinating misadventure. I sometimes laugh when I think of the fire extinguisher thing, but at the time it was an unpleasant experience. Benadryl made me see things in people that weren't there, but that doesn't make it fun at all. I have never touched this stuff since then and never will simply because of its lousy feeling on the body and there are more mind expanding things out there. Don't take it for any reason other than a cold unless you want to gamble with chance and trouble. Benadryl is what I'd call mind dulling or mind slushing because my brain doesn't work right at all. It drills into my brain and smashes it into a bunch of randomly connecting firing chunks of misplaced neurons. Warning, this next story revolves around a suicide attempt, so if you are triggered by that kind of material, please skip this story and move to the next one. Thank you. I've struggled with depression for as long as I can remember. Because of the way I think about things and feel about myself, I have a very addictive personality. When I find something that makes it difficult for me to think clearly or just knocks me out for a couple of hours, I'll take it over and over again in increasing doses until it either makes me sick or has an effect I don't like. I've abused diphenhydramine since I was able to take medication on my own without adult supervision. I've gotten a bit more self-control now and only take about 125 milligrams at a time and not every day. At one point, I was taking about 250 milligrams a day, every day, and sometimes more. I had to cut back down on it when I started having insomnia and began fainting in odd places. Usually, taking a little bit of it and not being able to really dwell on the things that haunt me when I'm sober is enough for me, and sometimes, that's not the case. In January of this year, 2008, I was going through a very depressive period. Like I said previously, I've always struggled with depression, but this was an especially intense time for me. I thought daily, more like hourly, about killing myself. And one day, the thought came to me that I could just swallow all of the pills I was taking every day. Just take them all at once and pass away into the tingly, mind-numbing bliss I was so fond of. How wonderful would it be to just fall asleep and let all of my mental anguish fade away into nothingness? I didn't plan on doing it, I hadn't thought about it for hours or anything, and then finally plucked up the courage. I literally came to the realization that that would be the best way to go, stood up, went into the bathroom and swallowed every pill of diphenhydramine that I had. The bottle was of 100 pills, 25 milligrams each, but I'd taken about half of them over the past couple of weeks, that's why my dosage is approximate, I didn't count them. Then I went and sat down in the living room as if nothing had happened. Luckily for me, I wasn't home alone and my eldest sister shares my mental state. She knew what I had done without me saying a word about five minutes after the fact. A few minutes later, we were in the car on our way to the hospital. I started feeling it much more quickly than I usually do. Usually, it takes about 45 minutes to an hour for me to really feel that it's working, but that night, I started feeling it about 20 minutes in. By the time we reached the hospital, I felt like I couldn't breathe. Somewhere inside me was still rational thought because it hadn't been long enough to truly mess with my concentration and I realized that I was breathing. I tried counting the breaths to send that thought home, but even as I counted, it felt like my lungs were growing more and more heavy. As the nurse was getting information from me for admittance, I found it increasingly harder to speak. At this point, I was terrified because I could still think clearly. I felt like my mind was alive and screaming while my body died all around me. By the time they had all of the information they needed and had taken me to the ER room, I was beginning to slip in and out of consciousness even with my sister smacking my hand and telling me to wake up. I managed to open my eyes every now and then, but what I saw didn't make sense. I thought I was at home throwing my clothes into the garbage can. I thought I was on a television show. I thought that my sister was my mom. She died in 2002. And I kept moving my arms even though I didn't feel them or realize what I was doing. There was a nurse on either side of me trying to put in an IV and draw blood and evidently it took them much longer than it should have because of my erratic movements. All at once in my stupor, I was overwhelmed with nausea. 
The nurse brought me a bedpan, and after a lot of painful dry heaving, I threw up what I thought were little bugs in my delirium, but I later realized were remnants of the pills I had swallowed. After that, I completely lost consciousness to myself. Supposedly, I woke up several more times and talked to a few of the nurses, but I have no actual recollection of it. They put a catheter in me, and I had no idea until my sister told me about it later on. The next thing I remember was waking up in a hospital bed the next morning with my sister and a nurse who had been instructed to stay with me. I ended up being admitted into a psychiatric ward for a week and almost losing my job during my absence. In conclusion, don't do this. Seriously, it's a fun drug to take a little bit of, but in large doses, it's completely terrifying. And that's coming from someone who thought she wanted to die. When that stuff kicked in, all I wanted was for it to be out of my system. I was so terrified of what had occurred that I wasn't able to take any more diphenhydramine, even when I actually needed to, for allergies, for several months afterward. I take it fairly regularly now, but never more than 125 milligrams. I never want to experience anything like that ever again. I have taken smaller doses of diphenhydramine before, about 400 to 500 milligrams or so, and have not had any real lasting problems, so I figured it was okay to take more without experiencing any ill effects. Oh god, was I wrong. I was walking to school one morning in October, and I stopped by the grocery store on the way there to pick up the pills. I purchased a bottle of 32 50 milligram gel tabs of Unisom, a sleep aid, and a Butterfinger bar. As I left the store and continued on my way to school, I downed 16 of the little blue pills. This was at about 6.20 a.m. I was looking for a way to not entirely be myself at school that day, a chance to be so out of it that I could sleep through class and just waste the day away without having to think too much. Needless to say, I got more than I bargained for. Anyways, so I continued walking to school and was basically fine until about 6.50 or 6.55 when I arrived. I walked through the building for a few minutes, but because I was a little early, not too many people were there, so I wandered back outside. Outside, I was walking past the gym when I saw this guy that I sort of knew. He was a good friend of one of my friends, and he said hi as I walked past. I said hi as well and was anxious to make my way past him and go on into the school, but then he noticed that I was not walking exactly straight, and he asked me if I was okay. I told him that I was fine, which wasn't true. I was not anywhere near fine, but that's what I said anyways. He didn't quite believe me. I think he thought I was drunk or something because I was walking all crooked and kept tripping and I wasn't talking like the most intelligent person either. At this point, I was starting to feel the effects of the drug, majorly. I was having a very hard time walking, especially with my book bag on. It felt like I was being pushed down by some unknown force, like someone had turned the gravity up and was still turning the knob. My tongue was becoming increasingly larger and it wasn't working too well. I would try to say something and instead of using my tongue to form sounds, it just kept getting in the way. So he kept asking me what was wrong and I kept telling him that I was fine, just leave me alone and let me go on, but he wouldn't let me go. He was telling me that I was not okay and I needed help. Then a teacher or someone came by. I don't know if someone went to get her if she just happened to be walking by, but she sat me down in a chair and told me to rest and calm down. Well, I tried to sit down, but I kept slipping out of the chair, and finally I ended up just laying on the concrete right outside the gym there. I kept trying to get up, but no one would let me. Some other teacher or administrator people came by and they kept asking me questions. They were asking me what I had taken and how much. I wouldn't tell anyone, so the lady said that I had to tell her, and if I didn't, then she was calling 911. That scared me because I didn't want to go to the hospital. I had done this before, and if I just had some time to let it wear off, I would be fine. I don't remember too much of what happened next, just bits and pieces, but I think my friend's friend and some other teacher helped me walk to the attendance office and they put me in a chair. I vaguely remember the lady calling 911 and giving the address of the school to whoever was on the line. I remember seeing the paramedics come a little after that, these two guys in all blue came into the office. That is the last thing I remember until the hospital, but according to my friends who came into the office, I was passed out on the floor and it looked like I was dead. 
I was then loaded onto a stretcher and wheeled out of the office into an ambulance where I was taken to the hospital. I don't remember any of the stretcher or ambulance ride though. The next thing I remember is seeing this lady, about 25 years old or so, and she was trying to get me to drink this stuff, and I didn't want to. So she shoved this tube down my nose, through my throat, and into my stomach and put the charcoal into me that way. I think I passed out again after that, but the next time I woke up, I remember looking around and thinking, where the hell am I? I noticed the IV in my arm, and then I looked down and I saw that I wasn't wearing any clothes, except this little hospital robe. What happened to my clothes? I noticed that I wasn't wearing any underwear either, and the sad part was that I didn't know if that was because someone had removed them or if I just had forgotten to put on underwear that morning. Then I remember my grandmother and parents came in and tried to talk to me, but I was still totally not there. My mom tells me I was saying things that made absolutely no sense and even talking to people who weren't in the room at all. I was still having hallucinations also, the walls were moving and was hearing things as well. I had to stay in the hospital for a few more hours until my heart rate and blood pressure were back to fairly normal and they had IV'd enough saline or whatever into me to make me have to get up and pee about four times. A man came in and talked to me and asked me if I was trying to commit suicide and he said that I was going to be admitted into the local behavioral center. So I was checked out of the hospital and checked into the behavioral center where I had to stay as an inpatient, meaning that I had to spend the night there for four straight days. After that, I was allowed to go home at night but come back to the day program from 8am to 4pm for 5 more days. I was put on antidepressants and I was suspended from school for 3 days as well because when I was passed out, the school searched my book bag and found the rest of the Unisom, some Advil, and a lighter. I have to go to a drug and alcohol abuse program for 2 weeks and continue with counseling after that. In all, I missed seven days of school, my chance to go to homecoming, and now my parents are more paranoid than ever. I nearly died in that hospital. Now you tell me, is it really worth it to take a few pills and try to change your mindset for maybe a few hours and risk all of that? I didn't think it could happen to me either, but it did. All I know is, I will never touch that drug again, nor any other. It's just not worth it. If you happen to catch the update video that I posted yesterday that is now unlisted, um, you know that I had some speech problem, uh, the reading problem that I have with uh, these trip reports and uh, whatever I may be reading at the time. Uh, this, for these stories that I read today, it wasn't as bad. It, still, it was still happening, but I felt like it was a lot better. So hopefully, you know, maybe it's a good sign that it, um, I got through it quicker because um, I... I mean, just happening out of nowhere, just not being able, like, looking at a word and looking at a sentence and just not being able to have have the words come out of your mouth. Like, look right here, I was put on antidepressants. I could say that in my normal voice, but, like, trying to say it, you know, in my, my trip keeper spooky voice, it's just like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's weird shit. So, yeah, but that wasn't too bad today. Um, I'm... For right now, when I do make videos, if I make a compilation video like this one, the set of stories, it's going to be shorter stories, so that's why this video is shorter than most. Um, and then, um, yeah, we'll, we'll just see. We'll go from there, and uh, hopefully it gets better and go back to normal, and then I could start doing longer videos again. But for right now, we're just going to stick to this format. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure you guys don't mind. You're, st you're still getting content every day. Well, not, not every day. That'd be crazy, but uh, every week. Um, yeah, so uh, if you liked it, just please be sure to give this video a like and uh, subscribe if you're new, if you made it this far. I really appreciate it. And uh, comment down below what you thought and share it with your friends. All right. Thank you.